If you're headed to Dormiti Super Ski in Italy to ski or board, one of the things that many people do is a tour of the Sella Ronda Loop. So let's do that now and talk about what it's like to ski or board at Dormiti Super Ski. Tell me now, tell me something. So what exactly is the Sella Ronda? Well, it's a collection of mountains that look like this in the Dolomites in Italy that are surrounded by a series of ski resorts that are all interconnected. And what that enables you to do is hop from chairlift to slope to chairlift to slope and do a loop of the Sella Ronda. You can do the Sella Ronda loop in one of two directions. If you go clockwise, you're doing the orange route. If you go counterclockwise, you're doing the green route. The signs will be color coded and you can also see it on the map to match the direction that you're going. I started out at Carvaro. There was a line that took about eight minutes, but once I got through there, you get all the way to the top of the gondola and you're ready to start. There are frequently trail maps that you can consult to make sure you're on the right path. I initially started out with the idea that I was going to have my map handy, consult it all the time, along with a list showing what order I should take the lifts in to make that loop. But what I eventually found is that the slopes are so well marked out on the mountain that I didn't really need the map. One issue that you may have to deal with is that everybody else is probably doing the Sella Ronda loop also. Check out the second line I have to deal with. What is Dolmichi Super Ski really like? Well, it's the second largest ski and snowboard resort in the world. As I've mentioned, it's a collection of ski resorts that are scattered all around the Dolomites. Some of the more famous valleys and names you may recognize are Cortina, Val Gardena, Alta Badia. All of this is combined into one mega resort. The big trail map was not that helpful because I know based on my trail map in my pocket that the next trail if I need to take is number eight. It's not on that map. So I'm just gonna follow the signs pointing you to the Celeronda Orange Loop, and hopefully we'll get there. When you compare Dolomiti Super Ski to the largest resort in the world, the Trois Ballet, it seems a lot more spread out, even though it's smaller. And that's because the vertical drop in a lot of the peaks is not that great. In fact, sometimes they're no larger than you'd find in the Northeast of the United States. But what you get is a web of chairlifts and slopes spread out over a huge amount of space. All right, another sign coming up showing you which way to go. So we'll go that way. If you can't find it on the big map, just follow the signs for Celeronda and keep your little pocket map handy because it does list the lifts in order that you're supposed to take them. So putting aside the Celeronda loop, if you're coming just generally to the Dolomiti Super Ski, where should you stay? If you're a beginner skier or boarder, the areas that may be the best for you are the Suisi areas of Val Gardena, the Colfusco areas over near Corvara, and Alta Badia in general, because there are a large concentration of beginner slopes there. Intermediates and experts, you'll be happy pretty much anywhere. We stayed in Val Gardena, specifically a town called Ortesi, but some of us wanted to ski the terrain over in Alta Badia, and we ended up driving. It took 45 minutes just to get between the two towns. If you wanted to drive to Cortina, it would have taken us an hour and a half. One thing you definitely need to remember to do is take in the scenery while you're doing this, because it's totally beautiful. There are so many towns in Dolmiti Super Ski that it may make sense to go check some of them out. If you have a car, that makes it a lot easier. The bus does sometimes seem crowded, but either way, it can be a lot of fun to go explore some Alpine Italian villages. If you want to do the Cellar Ronda Loop in either direction, the key tip is to start early. Get there as soon as the lifts open. I took my first lift at 9.30 and there were already lines amounting to 10 minutes on the first set of lifts. It did thin out later, but still, those lines add significant time. The next day, when I hit the same lifts at 8.30, right when they opened, there were no lines for the first five lifts I took. You can use that save time to have a nice lunch, grab a coffee in the sun, or maybe even turn around and try and do the loop the other way. The slopes in the Cellar Ronda are either intermediate or beginner. So if you're a complete beginner, you may not be able to do the entire loop. But if you look at the trail map, you may be able to find sections that you can do and perhaps bypass some of the more difficult slopes and jump back on the loop to get a longer stretch. The trail map gives you a good sense of the layout. You have the Cella Ronda loops in the middle, and then I would say there's really just two basic areas where there are collections of slopes, over in Val Gardena and over at Alta Badia. The remainder of the slopes you could describe as spokes that project off of the Cella Ronda loop. 
make sure you also check out the spokes. There's great terrain there. And another reason to do so is that if you're on the loop, the chairlifts and gondolas tend to get pretty crowded from everybody who's doing the loop. If you go out to the spokes, you're likely to find less people in the lines. How long will it take you to complete a loop? It's going to depend on how fast you ski, how long the lift lines are, whether you stop and grab lunch or coffee, and maybe even the visibility. I'd say a good estimate is going to be no quicker than two hours, maybe three or more. So if you're gonna do what I'm doing, is pay less attention to the trail map and just follow the signs for Sela Ronda, pay attention to the color, not the crowd. So I assume that this lift was going to be one I had to take because it's got such a large crowd. But then I looked up at the green Sela Ronda sign. That's the opposite direction of the loop. So I gotta go find my lift, which would be with the orange Sela Ronda sign. So I figured out my lift is actually up there and I'm not gonna walk all the way up there. So my solution is to go down a little bit more, get a non Celeronda loop lift that will take me back up there and I can rejoin the loop. Think smartly, I can avoid a long line at that lift. One thing that we noticed is that a lot of retail stores and grocery stores were closed between 12 and two in the afternoon, presumably because the Italians like to have their lunch. That seemed to carry over onto the slopes. Around 12 to two, the lift lines became a lot shorter because I think a lot of people were enjoying their lunches. If you're not staying in a town that's close to the Celeronda Loop, like Ortesi or Cortina, you need to allot time in order to get to the loop from where you're staying. It could take you 45 minutes each way, an hour, half an hour, just depending on how fast you ski or board or how far away you are. If you have a car like us, you could drive closer and that will give you more time to enjoy doing the loop itself. All right, so we started way over there at those lifts, came down to the bottom here, up to where I am now, and now we're gonna head over in that direction making a loop around the rocks. Places to eat lunch. It's Italy. They're all over the mountain. What would you expect? Sun yourself, eat. There seemed to be more than I saw at Zermatt, Ski Alberg, or Andermatt. Enjoy your lunch. As you can see, this slope is a bit icy. I'm gonna try and stick to the right side where there's some of the snow that's been pushed off by other people. I'm trying to keep a tight line in there and hopefully it'll be much more manageable than going down sheer ice like everybody else is doing. When I did the loop, it was spring skiing conditions. So if you started early in the morning, you had nice groomed runs, but by late morning, a lot of the snow had been scraped off and you had some pretty icy conditions. There is one point at the Wolkestein base that you have to cross the street to get to another level. Dolmiti Super Ski is so spread out that when you look at the trail map, it can be difficult to read because you can't tell which way you'd be going on a specific slope. Sometimes there are arrows to help you, and other times you have to deduce it by looking at which way the chairlifts are going. And thank you, Icon Pass, for not requiring a stay at specific accommodations in order to use your Icon Pass at Dolmiti Super Ski. Unlike Epic Pass, which does have such a requirement for some of its European partners and for having the pass actually work on the system as opposed to having to go to the ticket office, show the Icon Pass, and get one of their passes. So that's it, the Celeronda Orange Loop. Starting out here at the Boe Gondola, going this way, making the whole loop and coming back here on this gondola, the Borist gondola. 
the Cellar Ronda Loop is a very popular thing to do. I'm glad I did it. If you come to Domiti Super Ski, you should definitely try it yourself.